Welcome to the Chaplain's Academy podcast. This is a teaching ministry of Christian chaplains and coaching. I'm Jim Kirkland, Executive Director located in Leesburg, Georgia. Hello, everyone. I'm Ray Huff, Education Director from San Antonio, Texas. It is my pleasure to be with you today. So this recording was actually made for our 2024 participation in the Correctional Ministries and Chaplains Association Conference. It is our pleasure to participate as a gold sponsor. This is the workshop that we presented at the CMCA conference in Wheaton, Illinois, May 17th and May 18th, 2024. And our presentation is called Christian Chaplain Education Endorsement and ordination. The recording is divided into three specific sections, and I'll present the first two. Section one is chaplaincy from a biblical Christian worldview and why it is so important to restore chaplaincy to Christianity. And the second covers 10 steps to ordination for those who may be interested in joining our chaplain team, along with some examples of the types of things that secular chaplain educators are requiring of modern day chaplains. Many of these things, well, frankly, need to be avoided by the Christian community as we maintain our gospel focus. Ray? I'm excited to present section three on the subject of clinical pastoral education that is taught from an unapologetically biblical Christian worldview. I'll encourage you to consider enrolling in the life transforming program called CPE. It will make you a far better chaplain and spiritual care provider. And wait until you hear about the higher education and advanced degrees you can earn by enrolling in our CPE program. We are receiving God's grace and favor on our ministry and it's growing exponentially. And we would like to invite you to join us in the kingdom work we share. So in the notes below in the YouTube channel and the video, you'll see the title of each of the three sections along with a timestamp. That way, if you want to skip ahead to a specific section, you can feel free to do so. Enjoy the presentation. In this section, we will discuss the importance of restoring chaplaincy to Christianity and why a truly biblical Christian education is so crucial to the craft of chaplaincy from within a biblical Christian worldview. Modern chaplaincy, spiritual and pastoral care has been hijacked by secular humanism and also New Age thought. Thirty years ago, it would have been unheard of to consider an atheist to be a chaplain, but no longer. The influence of universalism and New Age philosophy on chaplaincy has created a modern culture where there are many paths to heaven, if there is a heaven at all, and hell doesn't even exist. There are many ways to be accepted by God, if there is a God at all, and each person must discover truth for themselves, which is the only place that truth can be found in themselves, they say. So we need to train our chaplains and our students how to work in secular settings while keeping the gospel always in view. Now, there's a link to a video clip in a movie scene featuring a new age chaplain that is really worth watching. We found it on the YouTube channel called Wretched. Pause the recording here. Find that link right in the description below. Watch it and then return to the lecture. For 1,500 years, chaplaincy has been a distinctly Christian ministry. It comes from the 4th century, an office of Capelli, the French word for the cloak of the legendary pastor Martin of Tours. You probably know him as St. Martin. He was a Roman soldier and converted to Christianity around 374 AD, and he became a renowned pastor who cared for all who were in a crisis and who needed help. There's one legend that tells of him cutting his cloak in half to offer it to a poor beggar who was cold. It served as a warm blanket for the man. And essentially, that term, chaplain, it grew to imply being wrapped in the sacred presence of Christ. And the English translation of the word is chaplain. And it's a special office of clergy that was created to be literally the keeper of the sacred presence. 
modern Christian chaplains remain keepers of the sacred presence, for that is what we are. And we believe that it is only the born-again Christian who can even fill the office. After all, the true Christian has the Holy Spirit dwelling inside us. And therefore, wherever we go, there he is. We bring his peace and calm to a dying and hurting world. We offer tangible acts of service and love and a willing listening ear to let them share their struggle with a trusted friend who truly cares. Because this is what we do, we must learn to be at peace to bring his peace. We must be calm to bring calm. Well, unless we have learned to trust God during our own storms, we will never be capable of helping anyone else trust him during theirs. Therefore, the practice of deep spiritual disciplines and self-awareness and making progress at becoming the person God created us to be, well, that's the most important work that we Christian chaplains can do. And also, the skills we teach in clinical pastoral education are worth considering. They're invaluable and highly recommended. You see, we will become experts in communication and listening to understand, skilled at using seriously curious questions to draw out a person's thoughts, feelings, hopes, fears, and their faith. And through those skillful questions, we hope that God will encourage them to open the door by asking us for a reason for the hope they see in us. But we never force our beliefs uninvited, and if we do, we would lose the opportunity to serve in most secular settings. Therefore, we must be careful and wise and never stray from the gospel. This is why we learn to listen and use questions to draw their story out of them, so that God can do the talking while we do the listening. We know there is nothing we can do, nothing we can say to fix them. Only God can fix them. So stop fixing. Therefore, we pray for his guidance in our presence, so that in our presence and with our presence, he can draw the person near to himself. For the Christian chaplain, Jesus is the heart of our mission. We are ambassadors of Christ, and we must work to proclaim the love and forgiveness and reconciliation and changed life that can only come to those who are won by Christ's love, which we carry into the world. So we desire to share that truth with the people to whom we are sent, wherever that is, jail, prison, hospital, first responders, disaster response, you name it, wherever you serve or will serve as a chaplain, that is the mission. We accomplish our work by serving everyone. We love all people, and we approach each person, regardless of their lifestyle or culture, their beliefs or their way of living, without judgmental condemnation. We do not force our faith upon them, unwanted or uninvited. And doing so, well, that's called proselytizing, and it could lead to losing your job in a secular setting and your ministry credential with us. But we never leave the gospel, though. Our mission is and will always be what Jesus says the mission is and not what the world says. And so, we invite people into a relationship that gives them a hospitable place with a trusted person where they can talk about things that are hard to talk about. And then we listen. And we listen twice as much as we speak. We wait patiently for them to be drawn to Christ while trusting the Holy Spirit to open the door to share our faith in Him. It takes a special kind of heart to serve well as a Christian chaplain. We chaplains serve on the front lines of ministry, serving people who live and act and believe very differently from ourselves. So we listen, listen, love, love, while trusting the Holy Spirit to open the door to deeper spiritual conversations that may lead them to Christ. We long for the opportunity to draw them to Christ, but... We refrain from finger-wagging judgmentalism that closes the door to a relationship before it can even start. We like to tell our chaplains, the modern-day Christian chaplain is an undercover chaplain commando, and we work in enemy-occupied territory. There's a lot of truth to that. We must be wise and gentle, loving and interested in people while hoping that our client or patient or friend will open the door 
to share the gospel. And we take 1 Peter 3.15 quite seriously. For our ministry, this may be the most chaplain scripture we can think of. And it says, But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you, yet doing it with gentleness and respect. And when a person is drawn to Christ, then, well, we share the gospel with love and we proclaim the truth of God as found in Scripture and put on display by how we conduct our lives right in front of them. And until that happens, we serve them. We serve them from within their system of faith, from within their culture, and we do that without being afraid of getting cooties or something. We chaplains must learn to live in the tension a tension that exists between our sincerely held beliefs and those of someone else. Usually, we're there to help people who are in a crisis. We don't shy away from doing that, regardless of how they might live or what they might believe. You see, in a crisis, correcting errors or giving a sermon isn't appropriate. Chaplains are a loving, sacred presence in the midst of grief and trial. We're not apologists to correct everything that we think is wrong with some other person. Instead, we help them talk things out in a safe environment, and then we watch the Holy Spirit work while we learn how to get out of the way. We serve people who are lost, who are hurting, who are suffering through a personal crisis or a disaster that has them at a complete loss for how to deal with the storm that they are experiencing. So we love them as they are while working to shepherd them to a place of peace where Christ just might be encountered. We are the keepers of the sacred presence, after all, and at the end of the day, it is only what we have done to proclaim Christ, sometimes with words, and that is what will make a difference. At our ministry, we have a mission statement that is summarized by a motto. It's an easy motto to remember. It goes like this. Make a friend, be a friend, and draw your friend to Christ. And you know, you might have to be a friend for a long time before you win the right to lead that one to Christ. For this reason, a chaplain must be committed to self-awareness, continuous progress in actually walking the walk we talk, in healthy spiritual disciplines, and in moving away from unhealthy character traits towards healthy biblical character traits. We must be dedicated learners whose lives are being steadily changed by Christ over time. For That is what a disciple is and what a disciple does. It is possible to believe in God and acquire knowledge, but it is another thing entirely to believe God and have that change the way you live and think and act and talk and how you love your neighbor. And to do all this, the chaplain simply must be committed to continuing education, the kind that helps them make progress at becoming the person that God created them to be so that others can see what progress looks like. But today, in chaplaincy, there are limited resources for the modern chaplain to gain quality continuing and higher education from within an unapologetically biblical Christian worldview. This is why we started the Chaplain's Academy, to provide a growing number of opportunities for life-changing knowledge and application that can help each of us move forward in our walk with Jesus and especially in the craft of chaplaincy. So, are you a dedicated learner? Are you being steadily changed as you live for Jesus while putting this changed life on display for others to see? If so, you might be interested in learning how you could possibly Become one of our amazing chaplains. The next section will be all about that. In this section, I'll cover how one may become a chaplain with Christian chaplains and coaching. And I'll discuss the increasingly secular trends that are impacting modern chaplain training and Christian education that simply must be addressed. We're excited about the work that God has given to us, and we offer a growing number of opportunities for our chaplains to obtain continuing education, certification, clinical pastoral education, 
And he even higher degrees like a bachelor's degree or a master's degree that includes exclusively our CPE program for credit towards the degree. And we're excited to announce that our Chaplain's Academy, in partnership with Campus EDU and Kingswood University, will be offering an accredited associate's degree in chaplaincy right on our website. So stay tuned. Let's begin with who we are and how to become credentialed by us. Christian Chaplains in Coaching is a 501c3 nonprofit ecclesiastical ministry set apart for the evangelical, biblical Protestant Church to train, ordain, endorse, and deploy qualified believers to serve as chaplains. We take our mission seriously and we invite qualified candidates to join us in the kingdom work that we share. Our website provides a clear description of membership requirements for anyone who may desire to become one of our excellent member-ordained chaplains. It generally takes three to five months to complete our entire 10-step process, which could lead to a successful ordination with our ministry. Step one is making sure the candidate meets our requirements and is both in alignment and agreement with our statement of faith, our core values, our code of conduct, and our description of chaplaincy. Our chaplains must have a minimum of a high school education, but they also have to be members in good standing of a biblical, Protestant, evangelical, Christian church. They have to be in submission to their pastors and have a strong desire for continuous learning through higher education, continuing education, by reading, getting certifications, self-study, and even coming to our annual spiritual care conference. The candidate's pastor will need to recommend them and confirm the credible evidence of genuine faith, a changed life, a mature belief, and that the church is in full alignment with our statement of faith. Now, if there is a denomination, it also must not have any stated positions that would conflict with any item described in our statement of faith. And if the candidate meets our requirements, they believe that they and their church and their pastor are aligned with us, then they can proceed with step two. This is where they would submit an application for membership and ordination. There's a non-refundable fee of $100 to cover our staff time, the background check, and for obtaining the pastoral and personal references that we require. And once completed, the candidate will schedule a personal interview by Zoom video recording or conferencing. And that'll be with a member of our team to discuss the call on their life to possible ordination as one of our chaplains. An important part of this discussion will be to consider if they're a fit for our ministry and also whether we're a fit for them. We expect to partner with our chaplains for a lifetime of effective ministry, and this means supporting each other in the kingdom work that we share. If approved to move forward in the process, the candidate will move on to step four and complete the required coursework. At minimum, they must complete our basics of chaplaincy and certification in biblical grief care. Our chaplains who wish to serve as clergy in Kairos prison ministry must also take our certification in jail and prison ministry course. Altogether, these courses, every one of them, are designed to be completed during a two-month term. Each course will require about two and a half hours per week. They're self-paced, fully online, and you can even work at two in the morning if you like. We use the award-winning Populi Learning Management System used by many universities. Once the required courses are successfully completed, the candidate will move on to step five. And during this step, we require the candidate to take a personal spiritual retreat to consider seriously if they're called to ordination as one of our chaplains by seeking to hear from God during a special Kairos time or moment of connecting with Him. Then they write a short paper, not a theological treatise, just a short paper, written to explain what the candidate has learned about themselves and their call, the ministry they feel called to accomplish, how they fit our ministry, and to answer the two most important questions that we want our chaplains to spend the rest of their lives answering. The first is, what is God saying to you right now about what He wants you to do, and what are we going to do about it? And the second is, if I became the person God created me to be, 
What would that look like? Now, once this is completed and the candidate is ready, they can move on to step six and have their second interview for ordination, which will go over their paper. After this interview, if the candidate is approved for ordination and membership, they'll move on to step seven. Here, they'll pay their current year's prorated dues and then sign a membership covenant agreement. Then in step eight, they'll receive a printed certificate of ordination, a photo ID with a lanyard and a patch that identifies them as ordained clergy with us, having all the rights to claim membership in Christian chaplains and coaching as one of our ordained chaplains. Now, steps nine and 10, those are ongoing steps. There's an annual renewal process to verify that you've done your continuing education that's been achieved and that you remain or the chaplain maintains membership in good standing with their sending church and that they've been obedient to our code of conduct. It's okay to change churches. That happens, but you must be a member of a church. We expect our chaplains to be dedicated to the hard work of study and personal growth. Therefore, growth in knowledge through self-study, conferences, courses, clinical pastoral education, and even the pursuit of higher degrees is an absolute must for our chaplains. We believe this. We believe it strongly. If you're still breathing, you're not done yet. So keep growing and learning in the art and craft of effective chaplaincy and contribute to the growth of our ministry as well. So this describes our 10-step process of membership and ordination. But why is this important? It's important because the secular world has hijacked chaplaincy and it is becoming increasingly non-Christian, even anti-Christian in many settings. Starting in the late 1960s, chaplaincy has become increasingly secular. What used to be distinctly Christian has moved away from its gospel roots. The creation of modern clinical pastoral education, or CPE, has led to vocational chaplains being required to complete master's degrees, along with four courses of CPE in the hopes of becoming a board-certified chaplain so that they could get hired. Increasingly, especially in places such as hospitals or hospice, nursing homes, jails or prisons, police or fire, and other settings like governmental bodies, Chaplains and even pastors who wish to serve in these settings are being required to take CPE and to become certified. Over the past 30 years, non-Christian influences have been redefining terms to mean something they never used to mean. Even that word Christian does not mean what we mean when they use it in a setting, a secular setting. A born-again Christian knows that secular definitions of Christianity are inaccurate and unbiblical. And today, we have professionally trained clinical chaplains who are of various beliefs and persuasions. Even atheists are becoming chaplains. How can that be? When these clinical chaplains use words like pastoral or spiritual or eternal or a phrase like mind, body, and spirit, they likely mean something very different than what we mean when we use those same words. Certainly, the words are not understood from a biblical worldview. For sure, my friends, the professionally trained atheist chaplain does not mean what we mean when they say spiritual care. Secular chaplains mean by that is emotional care. They're making the craft of chaplaincy and pastoral care nothing different than social work or psychology. Truly biblical Christians who hold sincerely to their faith are now being marginalized for our beliefs. Increasingly, CPE educators are saying some rather outrageous things to their students. From personal experience and from the stories that are shared by many of our CPE students who transferred to our program, let me share some examples of a few of the assertions made by these secular chaplain educators. You cannot be a truly professional chaplain while holding to a biblical Christian faith. Or, you must embrace and agree with LGBTQ theology to be an effective chaplain. Or how about this? You must never wear a cross lapel pin or carry your Bible with you, said by a lesbian instructor who proudly wears a rainbow sash as she visits the retired Baptist pastor dying of cancer. 
It absolutely amazes me how they do not see their actions as proselytizing. Or how about this assignment? What would you do if your chaplain instructor required this of you? True story here. The chaplain CPE instructor said to one of our students, to help you realize that your Christian faith hinders you from providing spiritual care, I require you to go to the local Buddhist temple, get down on your knees, and renounce your view that there is only one way to God. These are just a few of the things Christian chaplains, pastors, students, and spiritual care providers are increasingly facing as our society drifts further and further away from its Christian faith. I hope you're beginning to see why you should consider collaborating with us to offer distinctly biblical training that does not abandon the mission that we have together in Christ. So we encourage you to join with us so that you and your chaplain candidates and students can be trained and credentialed in spiritual and pastoral care from a biblical Christian world view. Our ministry was formed just six years ago, formed in direct response to the trends in secular chaplaincy. Our mission is to return chaplaincy to its Christian gospel-focused roots. What God has done in our ministry over the past few years has been amazing. We have trained, ordained, and endorsed more than 350 chaplains nationwide, and we're growing rapidly. As a recognized endorser for the Veterans Administration, Federal Bureau of Prisons, the U.S. military, and others, we've been blessed with a growing number of collaborations that you can see on our website. I'd invite you to look at that. And we'd love to invite you to join us and become a member of our growing chaplain team. But why should you also give serious consideration to enrolling in clinical pastoral education, which could lead to possible board certification and even credit toward a higher degree if you needed that? For that, let me turn this over to our education director, Ray Huff. Hello, my name is Ray Huff, and I am the Education Director here at Christian Chaplains and Coaching. CPE is the professional educational standard for teaching and training spiritual care providers who are called to the vocation of chaplaincy or pastoral counseling and care. CPE is taught in a hybrid process that includes three components, including number one, synchronous instruction and group learning, number two, asynchronous self-paced learning, and number three, a hands-on clinical learning environment to experience and practice the skills of spiritual care. CPE is an intense training to teach ministry students how to listen with love, allowing the other person to share their story. Their story may be filled with trauma, grief, and pain. CPE is an educational learning process that demands our students grow deeply in self-awareness and dependence on the Holy Spirit with the aim of becoming a man or woman of compassionate peace while standing in another person's terrible storm. God is opening amazing doors for Christians to bring His presence, His peace, His comfort and healing to a hurting world. Completion of Clinical Pastoral Education, CPE, allows our chaplains to work in a variety of places, including, but not limited to, hospitals, hospices, prisons, jails, nursing homes, assisted living facilities, the military, workplace chaplains in corporate settings such as Tyson Foods, as well as many other locations more and more unique opportunities are becoming available for trained chaplains to provide spiritual care in many different settings. Completion of clinical pastoral education is becoming the expected norm for most chaplain job postings. It is required for board certification as a chaplain or a board certified pastoral counselor. Where might you earn your clinical hours? We can approve your prison or jail, Kairos or CMCA volunteer work, your church, a hospital, nursing home, hospice, addiction recovery, and many other places, as I've said. We will work with you to identify the appropriate location 
right where you live, where you can complete those clinical hours. We offer CPE to spiritual care providers, chaplains, pastors, and theological students seeking professional growth and development in clinical pastoral settings. We teach clinical pastoral education, CPE, from an unapologetically biblical Christian worldview. Our intention is to bring God's sacred presence into every encounter we have with people from all different faiths and those with no faith at all. Our CPE students are assigned a group or cohort of their peers for weekly live online classes. Here they learn deeply with an emphasis on group process learning. CPE students are provided with a CPE supervisor and certified Christian coach to come alongside them to coach and mentor them as they practice providing pastoral care to people in crisis. In our approach, customized Christian life coaching for each individual student is part of the CPE experience. We meet for weekly classroom instruction via Zoom and we meet one-on-one with our students every week for coaching and mentorship. Our aim is to help our students make progress in their self-awareness and in becoming the person God created them to be. Self-awareness and spiritual disciplines are crucial to effective spiritual care, and we become personally involved with each student to help them become healthy spiritual care providers who can make a difference in their ministry context. CPE is a transformative, life-changing journey. CPE is not simply about acquiring information, but participating in transformation. A transformed person by the power of the Holy Spirit is truly our goal. This makes us unique from every other CPE program you will find. Life transformation happens over four levels or courses, CPE 100, 200, 300, and then CPE 400. Each CPE course will include 400 hours, 100 hours of academic instruction, and 300 earned hours in an approved clinical internship setting. Usually our students can be approved for clinical hours in the setting in which they already serve. We can provide you with a growing list of places where our CPE students have earned or are currently earning their clinical hours. Hours can be earned as an intern, staff member, or volunteer. Each semester of CPE is 15 weeks long, and we have three semesters each year. And because our program has been approved by the Association of Biblical Higher Education, a U.S. Department of Education recognized accreditor, each CPE course could qualify for up to six hours of bachelor's or master's level credit in a higher degree. For many, completion of our four courses can provide up to 24 hours of credit. That is accepted in a growing number of universities and seminaries that we currently collaborate with. You can see our current list of universities and seminaries on our website. And guess what? If you have a high school education and you'd like to go further in your education, you can now enroll in our associate's degree in chaplaincy in our collaboration with Campus EDU and Kingswood University. The entire degree program can be found on our website. Our teaching approach utilizes experiential learning group work and group process and understanding, reflection and action as the goal of learning as opposed to rote knowledge. CPE provides a reflective and relational learning environment that fosters self-awareness and personal and pastoral development. Such an environment involves mutual trust, respect, openness, challenge, and confrontation in a respectful and caring manner. Our students are expected to be self-directed and explore their theological framework as it applies and is integrated into their abilities to practice compassionate, spiritual, and pastoral care in secular settings. The hybrid learning model includes both online study as well as live classroom instruction and one-on-one coaching by Zoom video conferencing.
It is designed to allow students to complete self-paced coursework offline, as well as attend an online live group meeting virtually from home, office, or anywhere there is a quiet space and an internet connection. This hybrid course includes learning elements such as self-paced learning modules, excellent teaching with a Christian moral worldview, pre-recorded video instruction, class and group interaction and discussion, reflective activities, group projects, and student presentations with peer evaluation. The CPE supervisor educator facilitates the class by using video conferencing technology. Although students, their peers, and their CPE supervisor are many miles from each other, the hybrid learning model is intended to promote and encourage meaningful academic re relationships and a transformative journey, uh, an amazing learning process. Many of our graduates have made lifelong friendships across the country, and they look forward to seeing each other in person at our own annual spiritual care conference. The action reflection action clinical learning method is a process oriented inductive method of learning, which means going deep. It's about change, transition, and transformation. It involves peer feedback and evaluation as well as individual coaching and supervision from the CPE supervisor. This learning mod model begins with a clinical internship experience followed by reflection on the experience that generates peer evaluation and feedback, consultation, and hopefully an insight that can be utilized in the next clinical interaction. Using the action reflection process, the student evaluates the effectiveness of their spiritual care practice in relation to theological and spiritual perspectives faith practices, religious traditions, and the needs of the person being served. The student can then integrate the insights and pastoral skills that they have gained into new experience for ministry and personal growth. Our CPE course objectives begin in CPE 100, following a teaching method called Bloom's Taxonomy. This method will move the student from knowledge, understanding, and progressing through to CPE 400, where students are expected to begin to take what they have learned and analyze, adapt, and create new thoughts and actions based on the learning and experience throughout their CPE journey. This is why our CPE is transformative. It involves genuine mentoring relationships expected in biblical discipleship that goes beyond knowledge and moves to application, which produces life change. We believe it is important to teach to the standards established by the Board of Chaplaincy Certification Incorporated, BCCI. Our CPE curriculum is designed to comply with these qualifications and competencies. CPE 100 through 400 are the required chaplain courses for consideration for board certification. Board Certified Chaplain is the highest designation for a chaplain in vocational chaplaincy. Pastors may consider Board Certified Pastoral Counselor. Our CPE can lead to board certification through a number of recognized organizations such as the Association of Certified Christian Chaplains, the Spiritual Care Association, and Clinical Pastoral Education International. As I mentioned earlier, for those students who are looking to become marketable in the field of chaplaincy and find a paying job, CPE is a growing necessity. The typical chaplain position in a hospital or hospice requires a master's in divinity, four courses of CPE, and board certification. Other settings, such as a hospice, assisted living, and workplace chaplaincy may allow for a master's in ministry or similar with one or two courses of CPE. These are pretty steep requirements to apply for a chaplain position. But we have you covered. Take CPE with us and earn significant credit towards that master's degree if you do not already have one. Recently, the Association of Biblical Higher Education, ABHE, has approved our ministry to teach chaplaincy and clinical pastoral education for any of their approximately 
170 Christian universities and seminaries. They have endorsed us, Christian chaplains and coaching, because we are the only ones in the country that we're aware of teaching CPE and the common standards of chaplaincy from an unapologetically biblical Christian worldview. Dr. Philip Dearborn, in a letter to Christian chaplains and coaching, states this. He says, the Association of Biblical Higher Education is thrilled to partner with Christian chaplains and coaching and their clinical pastoral education program. We are aware of several ABHE institutions who have evaluated the curriculum and are including CPE in their degree programs. There is no question in my mind that chaplaincy training from a biblical perspective is so desperately needed in our society today. It would be well worth the efforts of other institutions to seriously consider how the CPE program may fit within their context. We are serious about our mission to restore chaplaincy to to Christianity, and we would love to have you join our growing and wonderful team of ordained chaplains. If you share our beliefs and values, are committed to continuing education, meet our membership requirements, and are serious about the kingdom work that we share, then we would love to add you to our growing team. We firmly believe our CPE program and our Chaplain's Academy present an exceptional opportunity for you to enhance your skills and proficiency in chaplaincy. Our commitment to the kingdom work we undertake is unwavering. We aspire to equip and prepare students with a missionary mindset, enabling them to be effective in their unique environments. Let's work together towards this common goal. Let us endeavor to extend the kingdom of God everywhere to everyone. I've been a pastor and chaplain for more than 30 years. I've pastored a church and done prison, police, disaster response, hospital, and hospice chaplaincy. I can tell you from personal experience that enrolling in CPE will change your life. We Christians must get better at providing effective spiritual care in secular settings. If you are a mature believer, growing disciple, and dedicated learner, we would like to invite you to join our team. Yeah, and I've been a businessman for many years, serving in executive management. I've been involved as a lay volunteer chaplain and a vocational chaplain, and uh, been doing that for more than 30 years. I attended a Kairos Inside Prison Weekend more than 30 years ago, and it had such a profound impact on me that actually it is the reason why I became a chaplain. I have experience in jail, in prison, hospital, nursing home, hospice, addiction recovery, probation, and inmate transition chaplaincy. I'm passionate about the kingdom work that we share. Join us and let's partner together in this kingdom work.